Nothing But The Words, episode number 48, How to Hire a Ghostwriter. Welcome to Nothing But The Words, the podcast that gives you everything you need to know to write a phenomenal book. Now here's your host, your author coach, Candace L. Davis. Hey there, and welcome to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis. One of the services I provide to my clients besides author coaching and book editing is ghostwriting. Now, even though I use the term ghostwriting, to be clear, I'm actually talking about both ghostwriting and co-writing for hire. They are essentially the same service. As a writer, you get paid to write the book for someone else. The only difference is how you are credited or rather whether or not you're credited at all. So as a ghostwriter, my participation in a book writing project is uncredited. You won't see my name anywhere on the book. As a co-writer for hire, my name appears on the book. So for example, the first person to hire me to co-write a book was the fabulous chef and top chef semifinalist restaurateur Antonia Lafaso. She's a great chef. She has several restaurants that she co-owns in the Los Angeles area. And she was kind enough to hire me to write her first book. My name does not appear on the cover of her book. Although there was nothing confidential about my participation in the project, my name appears on the cover page. So sometimes you will see the the co-writer's name on the cover or on the cover page inside. It just depends on what the arrangement is with the author. On Patrice Washington's latest book, for which I served as a co-writer, Redefine Wealth for Yourself, it comes out in March of this year. It's a fantastic book. I highly recommend you put it on your list of reading for 2021. For that book, my name appears on the cover. In both cases, I am the co-writer of the book. The ideas, the theories, the philosophies, the stories all belong to the author. It's my job as a co-writer or ghostwriter to help them get those ideas on the page to help them organize and structure their book and make it the best it can be and to do the actual writing. The author really shouldn't have to do much or any writing in a co-writing or ghost writing relationship. So if that appeals to you, if it sounds more like what you'd like to do, you might want to consider hiring a ghost writer. Now, I'm just using the term ghostwriter because it's easier to stick to one term, but it could be a ghostwriter who is uncredited. It could be a co-writer. The experience should be pretty much the same. There is also a brand of ghostwriting for which you can hire a writer to write a very generalized book for which you don't have to give any input. And that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm actually talking about the kinds of books that can position you as an expert, as an authority in your niche. I work with authors to capture their ideas and tell their stories in a book. And while I can do research for them, brainstorm ideas for them, and even help them refine and articulate their processes and philosophies and frameworks, the ideas and the experiences in the book are all theirs. That means we collaborate on the project. We write memoirs and subject matter expert books and how-to books together. So if that kind of writing process appeals to you, how do you hire a ghostwriter? Well, first, keep in mind that ghostwriting is something of a premium service. If someone is offering to write a full-length book for you for less than, say, $10,000, you probably need to be a little bit suspect. (laughs) Why is the service so cheap? Will you be writing a shorter book? Have you already written much of the book and just need help finishing it? Is this a new ghostwriter looking to get some experience and therefore willing to charge a little less? Those are definitely legitimate reasons for a lower price. Just keep in mind that any deal that seems too good to be true, even when it comes to ghostwriting, probably is. As a side note, if you have a traditional book deal, meaning your book is being published by a publisher who pays you in advance, your ghostwriter will probably expect a percentage of your advance, which means you do not have to come out of pocket to pay your ghostwriter. But most people listening to this podcast are going to self-publish whether they use a ghostwriter or not, and thus you will be paying out of pocket. Please do not ask your ghostwriter to wait and get paid on the back end as a percentage of sales once you start selling your book. Unless you have a huge platform or a significant track record selling tens of thousands of books, you're really asking that person to take a huge risk. And it's not really a fair thing to ask because if you don't market your book well, your ghostwriter may never get paid 
or may not get paid much at all. And they can't really control that process. And on your end, trust me, you do not want the headache of tracking book sales and every month having to pay out a percentage to a writer. That is a pain. So when you're looking for a ghostwriter, I recommend you keep three things in mind. Number one, experience. Number two, cost. And number three, connection. First, consider the ghostwriter's experience. Even if she hasn't, and I'm saying she could be a he, even if she hasn't written any books yet and you'll be her first client, she should still be able to show you samples of her published writing. It could be blog posts, it could be in-depth articles, but you want to see something substantial that shows you that she has significant writing ability, the ability to organize ideas, to come through clearly, to carry off a full book, as to see her work. Now, sometimes confidential ghostwriting agreements will allow the writer to show their work on a limited basis for the purpose of securing clients. So don't be afraid to ask about that. If they say, I have ghostwritten these books, but I can't share it with you because of confidentiality, that's also quite possible, but they should have something they can show you. Also, ask about their process for working with authors and how they will make sure they capture your voice so that your book sounds like you and not like their own personal writing style. So you want to talk to the ghostwriter about their experience with all these things so you can get an idea and feel comfortable that they actually know what they're doing. So second is cost. You do have to consider the cost and what you'll pay for ghostwriting. Yes, you can expect to pay at least $10,000 for a full-length book and probably, frankly, more than that. My ghostwriting fees for a full-length book start at about $15,000. But ghostwriting fees can go even higher, particularly when you're dealing with more experienced writers. So how much is the fee? Get that number up front. How and when is it expected to be paid? Because you probably won't be paying it all up front. You'll be paying it in a payment plan, maybe based on milestones, but you will definitely have to pay something in order to secure the agreement and get the writer started on your project. What happens if one of you needs to end the project for unforeseeable reasons? All of these questions should be addressed in your ghostwriting or co-writing agreement and whether or not that person is being credited should be a part of that agreement. Third, consider your connection with the ghostwriter. Talk to this person. Do you feel comfortable talking to him or her? Do you feel like you can trust this person? Listen, at some point you will likely reveal private, personal, or proprietary information to this person. This information won't necessarily make it into your book, but it may come up in the conversation. And that means you have to establish a certain level of trust before you begin to work together. Do you feel comfortable showing this person the side of you that you will have to reveal to write your book? That connection and comfort level, those things are really a huge deal. So remember, keep in mind your cost, keep in mind the experience, and keep in mind your comfort level when you are seeking a ghostwriter. If you know someone who has worked with a ghostwriter and had a great experience, that referral is priceless. Definitely go to that person and find out more about what it was like to work with that ghostwriter and how you can get in touch with him or her. Now, if you don't know anyone who's had that experience, you can look at books that have a with credit and check out those writers. Nine times out of 10, they are on Instagram. They have websites. You can go and get more information about them there. Just keep in mind that If those books were traditionally published, the ghostwriters were likely paid a percentage of the author's advance, so they may come at a much higher fee. But if you connect with them, just do it anyway. If you like their work, reach out to them on social media or via their websites. They may be able to refer you to someone who fits your budget. It also pays to ask within your network. A referral that comes from someone you can trust goes a long way, even if they haven't actually worked with this person in a professional capacity, if they know them well and can re- and can refer them to you, that can go a long way to- towards doing some of the research for you in advance. They already know this person's integrity, work ethic, and things of that nature. That can save you a lot of time and trouble in the research process. So look at books that you love that have credited co-writers and ask around within your network about ghostwriters. But if those avenues don't pan out, and they might not, You got to turn where we always turn when we need something and can't find it otherwise, which is the internet. Your ghostwriter does not have to live in your town or even in your country. I've worked with ghostwriting clients in Italy, England, Canada, other countries, and I am here in Atlanta, Georgia. 
You can find and work with a ghostwriter pretty much anywhere in the world as long as they meet your criteria for the kind of person you want to work with and for your budget. Now, obviously, you can do a Google search for ghostwriters with the kind of experience you're looking for. But you can also turn to sites like Upwork.com. They have freelance writers working there, and some of them do service ghostwriters. Some self-publishing companies like Jera Publishing here in Atlanta also have relationships with ghostwriters and can make referrals for you. Obviously, now, finding your ghostwriter through one of those avenues does add an extra layer of work. You will have to read their reviews, ask for referrals, I'm sorry, ask for references, and dive into their writing samples a little more deeply than you might with someone who comes as a trusted referral, but it's worth the effort. You will be spending a lot of time talking to this person. (laughs) So you want to make sure that you've chosen someone you really want to work with. Keep in mind that a great ghostwriter is likely to have a busy schedule and may not be able to start on your book right away. But when you find someone you really want to work with, it is more than worth putting down a deposit so you can get on their calendar and be next in line. Now, at this point, I personally only take a few ghostwriting clients each year. Most experienced ghostwriters are in a similar position. So be willing to wait a bit if you found the right person. It's definitely worth it. Finally, make sure you have a clear written agreement of what the ghostwriting process, cost, payment schedule, and writing credit will look like. Both you and the ghostwriter need to be protected by that agreement. The best way to do that is to discuss every point of it, get it all on paper, and both sign off on it. The truth is that if you're listening to this podcast, you probably don't need a ghostwriter. Most authors do not need a ghostwriter. If you need some help writing your book, An author coach or a program like my group coaching program, Short Books, Big Results, can provide the support you need at a much lower cost than ghostwriting. But if you find yourself in a position where you would rather invest more money and less time and you have the money to invest and you just don't have time to write your book, or frankly, you have no desire to spend the hours that it takes to sit at your laptop and type and type and come up with a full book, then ghostwriting might be a great option for you. In a future episode, I'll share exactly what the ghostwriting process looks like. But that's all for this episode. If you found it valuable, I would love a fantastic review from you on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Reviews really do make a huge difference for the show. Thanks for listening to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis, and I'll see you next time.